Hi, it's time for another math. Easy. So we're going to discuss, uh, well, proof of the fundamental theorem of Chicago. part one of basically the theorem. I'll show the proof here. I showed in my earlier video, I introduced this one here, and I showed why, and I, I showed basically this theorem here. I'll just uh, recap on it. So basically this one says if, if your function f is continuous on closed interval a and b, uh, a and b, the closed means it, it's defined at a and b. You see video link below on closed and open intervals. And then uh, basically, then the function g of x equals uh, the integral from a to x of f of t dt, where basically x is in between a and b, is continuous on a and b. So yeah, this function is going to be continuous if, if f is continuous. So it just means the integral is continuous uh, on a and b, uh, a closed interval, and differentiable on a and b. This just means you don't need to take the derivative at a and b. It doesn't have to have a derivative there, uh, but in between it, it does. And then basically you get this one here, to, then the derivative of it is equal to the function here, or the integral is the antiderivative of f of uh, x or f of t or whatnot. Okay, so now to uh, prove it, uh, I'll just uh, draw this little, uh, this graph here, we'll call this, this is y is equal to f of t here. I'm using t instead of x because we're going to use x, the variable inside here. So if you have a point, let's say here, we'll call this point x. Yeah, and we'll call this point x plus h here. So now what I'm going to do first on the proof is look at the integral of, yeah, uh, the integral between, well, this point here is a. So the integral from, let's say, x to a here, or and then from x plus h to a, or the number, it's, it's just the area of it. So this would be, we'll call this, this function here g of x. And then if we extend it all the way out to this one here, it's going to be g x plus h. And then the difference of the these two areas is just going to be this entire area here. So we're going to have it, yeah, you know, gx plus h minus g of x. Now this is just going to equal to, well, the integral from a to x plus h. It's up to here. That's the area under it of f of t dt. And then minus uh, this area here. So this one's just going to be a, this is going to be x, f of t dt. And now what you could do uh, with this part here, if you recall my uh, properties of integrals video, you could break this up into, well, something like this. You could, you could go from a to x of f of t dt, and then just plus it from uh, this one here. We're just going to go from x to h here. Because remember, just the area under the graph, so we're just going to break this area into two areas just so we could write it a bit neater. So now we're going to f of t dt, and then minus this last one up there, a x, this is, oh, this one is, yeah, this one is x plus h, for to include this one, and it's not h, so yeah, so it goes from x to x plus h, which is greater than it, yeah, and then just f of t dt here, and now we could uh, just subtract these two here, and they, these cancel here, this is the exact same one as this, so we're just going to be left with, yeah, we're left with this one, x to, to the x plus h, integral of it, of f of t dt, yeah, so now if, uh, yeah, for basically, h is not equal to 0, because as you can see, this one here is greater than uh, 0 in this case here. So if 4x is not e e uh, equal to 0, we can divide both sides by h. Yeah, so we'll get uh, this divided by h of g of x plus, uh, yeah, g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h. And then this one here is this, this integral uh, right there. I'll, I'll show you why we'll use this soon. Okay, now the next part of the proof, what we have to do now, uh, well, for now we'll just assume h is greater than 0 here. Uh, the proof for what I'm going to do now, it's it's very similar for h is less than 0. But in this case here, if you have something like this, if it's continuous between these two points here, if this since from if we just look at from x to x plus a, so we'll just look between here. Now, if you have a continuous function, you're going to have a minimum value here. We'll call this one, in this case, this looks like where the minimum is. We'll call this u, and this part here, or this length, we'll call it m here. So this this full length is m. So and and then uh, <clears throat> if we look at the maximum here, let's call uh, well at this point the maximum is, is actually right here. It looks like it's, it's there. So we'll call this point, we'll call this uh, capital M, and we'll we'll call this point v here. So v is equal to x plus h in this case here. Now, the reason I'm doing this one here, because if, if this is the minimum, this is the maximum here, what we could do is, if you were to draw just a rectangle across, so this rectangle, in this case, this, this width is h, because it's going to be x and x plus h, so then you're going to have a rectangle here of m times h, and then you're going to have a big rectangle here of m times, uh, capital M times h. And in, in this case here, what, what I'm trying to show is that this is the maximum area, this is the minimum area here. 
Yeah, that's uh, what we could write. Well, uh, I just want to go back up to here. So th this this value here, this is the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt, and that's just going to be this entire uh, area. But uh, yeah, so up to x plus h from between x and uh, x plus h. But as you can see, it's going to the area is going to be in between this minimum value and this maximum area there. So what we could write is little m times h is less than equal to the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. And this is just going to be less than capital M times H. Yeah, so this this area has to be less than, um, has to be greater than the minimum, has to be less than the maximum here. And uh, so now what we could also, I uh, also want to note down here, so U and, and V, they're going to be less than equal to X plus H and greater than equal to X. So it just means that they have to be inside this, this little uh, region here. Okay, so now uh, since h is not equal to zero, we can divide h on uh, uh, basically both sides here. So we're going to get m is less than equal to 1 over h integral x plus h here of f of t yeah, dt and then uh, less than m here. So we just divide it by h on both sides. So these h's would cancel here. And also uh, this is f of, uh, this is u. So we could just rewrite this a bit uh, better. We could write this one as f of u is that's what uh, m is equal to. So uh, this, this f of u is going to be less than this integral, and this is going to be less than f of v here. And so we'll have something like that here. And you can see from this point right here, this is yeah, this m. This is, yeah, this is just equal to f of u. So it equals f of u, and, and this is just equal to f of v here, or v is x plus h. But uh, remember, this it doesn't have to be x plus h. The v could be somewhere in between. It's just, just whatever the maximum is. In this case, it looks like the maximum is there. So now what we have, yeah, we have this one here. So what we could do now is if we take h and, and make it approach zero. So if this h was really, really small, so what we could do is as h goes to zero here, and then basically in, in this case here, the u's, u goes to x here, because remember it has to be in between x and x plus h. So as it's getting smaller and smaller, this u is going to be somewhere in between. And then we're going to have v approaches uh, also x as well. Because remember, v is in between x and x plus h. So if you're just making h really, really small, your max and minimum are going to be approaching x here. So they're going to be just the same value. Well, actually, uh, before we get to this one, uh, see this this formula right here? This one is just equal to the one we showed uh, above here. So this that's the, that's this one here. And that's just equals to this one here. So we'll just row input that first. Yeah, so we'll have uh, f of u here uh, less than equal to g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h less than f of v. And as you recall, the definition derivative, this looks like it once we take the limit goes to uh, of h goes to 0 here. So if we write this down here, well, we'll just write this separately first. No, actually, we'll just all write it all, all in one here. So limit as basically u approaches x, that's the same thing as h approaches 0, of f of u less than equal to limit h approaches 0, because remember, if we do the same thing, this this means this for this case. And this one is just h approaches 0 here. Yeah, then we just get this one is going to be less than uh, v as approaches x of f of v here. And now these ones here, uh, this one's approaching x, so we just plug that in. So we're just going to get f of x is less than equal to limit. Yeah, this one here, the limit, and then this one's going to be less than or equal to x here. So this value, if it's uh, yeah, by squeeze theorem, you can see the video link below, this one has to equal uh, g of x, I mean f of x here. Because this is it's greater than or equal to f of x and less than or equal to f of x has to equal it, so just by looking at that. And as you recall from definition derivative, this is the, d the derivative. So this is the g of x prime. This just equals to limit yeah, of this one here, so the definition derivative. That's, that's exactly the same form. So in this one, it has to equal f of x by squeeze theorem. And you can see the video I'll link on the uh, squeeze theorem below, or just look at this uh, common sense here. It has to be equal to it if it's less than equal to f of x and greater than equal to f of x. So then this is our proof here. So there's our proof. g of x is equal to f of x here, or the derivative of the integral, this is the area, is equal to it, uh, itself, the function. So now if you write this in Lebanese notation, uh, this is just some random notation here, you could just write it as d over dx of the integral a to x f, f of t dt. Now this is just g of x. Yeah, this is just uh, g of x here. This just equals to, well, itself, f of x. So that's all it's saying here. The, the, deriv uh, the derivative of the integral of f is f. This is from a to x here. So this is a definite integral, which means yeah, you have a real value here. So well, uh, yeah, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned about this proof. I'll do some examples later, uh, later in later videos, and then I'm going to 
do part two of the theorem of the integral uh, calculus or the fundamental theorem of calculus. Well, if you learn about this uh, this proof, it's it's pretty straightforward. If you just look at this minimum maximum area here, that's all for today. If you learn them, you can always download these uh, notes in the Dropbox link below and uh, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for another mad easy solution.